All right, so doing this video because a while back, someone asked me to do videos about places that I've lived and <clears throat> they suggested that it would be a good idea because I've talked about uh, Seattle and Tacoma and what to expect and that type of thing. So uh, folks really like that. And they said, but there are other places people are moving to, and that is true, obviously. So I did a video talking about uh, Indianapolis because that was the first city that I technically moved to and spent some time. Now, I moved to Cincinnati uh, before, but it wasn't for very long. Um, and so I didn't really get a good feel for the city. Um, so I didn't feel like I could really talk about the city in great detail the way that I could in Indianapolis. I spent over a decade there. So now we're talking about Albuquerque, New Mexico. And so with Albuquerque, New Mexico, I spent a couple of years there. So I can kind of tell you what to expect when uh, moving to Albuquerque, right? Now, let me first say, you know, growing up in Kentucky... Uh, and, you know, Nashville, Tennessee, that area, most of the land is somewhat flat. You will find some hilly areas, of course, obviously, a lot of farmland, things like that. There's absolutely no mountains. So un until you get down to the Smoky Mountains or something like that, but I'm talking about in Nashville, um, Bowling Green, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, Indianapolis, there's no mountains. It's typically either going to be flat or somewhat hilly. You have some pretty weird curves and roads and stuff like that and some drop-offs, but you don't really have anything that's drastic. And mostly everything is somewhat green, right? Or cornfields. That's usually the joke. Or in Kentucky, tobacco fields or cattle fields. But going to Albuquerque for the first time was a shock because flying there and looking down all you see is brown it was just brown 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 and landing it didn't change <laughs> because as you're landing all you see is brown everywhere and you see just a city and traffic and so i was a bit shocked i was out of my element that was i would say probably culture shock to me to a degree because of the simple fact that I was so used to everything being somewhat flat, maybe some hills and green. This was desert, obviously. Albuquerque's in the desert. And you saw the mountains of the Sandia Mountains actually sit there and you can see them. So for the first time, I actually saw a mountain that wasn't covered in trees. It was just a big giant rock. And so it was beautiful. To be honest with you, beautiful. Um, Albuquerque, one of the things that stood out, because you don't see a lot of trees, there are trees along the Rio Grande. So you'll see a lot of trees and vegetation, but for the most part, you don't see a lot of trees like you would in the traditional sense, like you would here or back in Kentucky or any place like that. Uh, there are, obviously there's vegetation, but you don't see a lot of that. So everything stands out. One of the things that stood out was the interstate. Uh, and I forget them now because I've had so many interstates in my mind. Um, but it took me a while to spell Albuquerque. <laughs> That's one of the first things. People say, where do you live? And I couldn't spell it because I kept getting it wrong. But it took me probably six months of living there to finally be able to spell Albuquerque. A-L-B-U-Q-U-E-R-Q-U-E. -E. It took a while because I kept getting it wrong. But they have two interstates that run through the city and they cross like this, like a T. You have I-25 that runs north to south and you have I-40 that runs east to west. And you have what's called the Big I. And the Big I is basically where those two interstates actually meet. And it looks like Los Angeles to me. Like, again, this was the first time seeing. Now, don't get me wrong. Indianapolis has more interstates than many cities do. There's interstates everywhere. But this was the first time I actually saw these big sweeping high highways and freeways, like just big giant everywhere. <clears throat> and it was kind of exciting. When you're flying in, everything is amplified because like I said, there's no trees and you see a lot of traffic. You see a lot of freeways, roadways. And one of the things is when we flew, the plane had to circle to land 
And we flew over Rio Rancho, which is where I bought a house. Rio Rancho is, is a suburb of Albuquerque. And I noticed something that was strange. You see paved roads and you see a lot of roads, like loads of roads, street gridded roads that have no pavement. And it blew my mind. I'm like, what is this? But you'll see it. You'll just see all of the outlines of roads, but there's no pavement. And so landing in Albuquerque, the airport was very tiny, very tiny for a city that has over a half a million people. And for the metro area, which has a little under a million people, to me, the airport seemed tiny, but it, very efficient. It suits the city, to be honest with you. Wasn't confusing at all. Very easy to go through. And the culture there is very big on if you want green or red. When you go to a restaurant, most people will ask you, do you like green or red? And they're talking about chili. Chili peppers are very big there, and a lot of people will d debate you on which one's better. I didn't really get it. I still didn't really get it. I still don't get it, rather. Um, you know, I've had it a couple of times, but it wasn't really something that really struck me as, as of major importance for me. Just a completely different thing, different vibe. Um, you will see, and I'm looking at the city now just to, for reference, Albuquerque is pretty much kind of in the middle of nowhere, right? It's in the, it's it's basically in the middle of nowhere because when you leave Albuquerque, <laughs> it's nothing but desert everywhere. Yeah, you have little small cities here and there, but there's nothing. And so the mountains lie right, I mean, you could see them in the city, you know, like the mountain, you could see it right there in the city. It's right there. It's not like here on Mount Rainier, you see it because it's massively tall, much bigger than the Sandia Mountains. But it's still 50 miles away. In Albuquerque, you could take the tram up. The peak tram is pretty cool. And it takes you all the way up to the top. And on the other side of the mountain is a ski resort. So you can ski and do different things right there in the city. If you love to be in the outdoors, Albuquerque is one of those places that really there's a lot of stuff to do outdoors. You have a lot of sunshine throughout the year. One of the things that was difficult for me was it's very hot. Now, not hot like Phoenix, Arizona hot, but it can get days of where it's really fairly hot. A lot of sun. If you enjoy being outside, this is the city to be at because not only do they have the mountains, they have open space. So a lot of open spaces, especially along the Rio Grande or Rio Grande as they call it, there's plenty of places. They also have been really working hard on creating a bike loop around the entire city. So the city focuses on that. The city really does love Route 66, one of the few areas still in the country that has a big section of Route 66. And they take pride in that, right? It's basically central when you're there. But Route 66 was one of the ways to get to the before interstates to get from one side of the country to the other. And so here in Albuquerque, well, there in Albuquerque, they still have a lot of businesses that are a throwback from that bygone era. And so the city focuses on the neon lights. One of the most beautiful parts of the city is driving along Central because you get a glimpse of kind of the past merged in with the future and you see all of the neon lights. It's just beautiful, right? A lot of small mom and pop businesses there. It's one of the cities that really does frown on chains. You don't see a lot of chains. When we first moved there, you didn't see a whole lot of chains. You're seeing more of those now, but they really, 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 as a culture, as a people, focus on having just local mom and pop businesses. That's what they really love. They kind of don't want that. Now, I remember back in the day, Cheesecake Factory wanted to go to Albuquerque, but they would not because there was a company called D's Cheese. D's, D-E-E-S, Cheesecake. And so D's Cheesecake had existed before the Cheesecake Factory did. And so the Cheesecake Factory legally could not come to Albuquerque. Uh, when D's, I think, went out of business or they shut that part of their business down, the Cheesecake Factory came in. But at that point, we had already moved from Albuquerque. The city does have a lot of malls right? For its size, has a lot of malls. Now, Rio Rancho doesn't have a mall, right? Rio Rancho is really underdeveloped, and I'll get to that. But Albuquerque, they have the Uptown Mall. Uptown is where you're going to see most of the high-end stuff. Now, right there in Uptown is a cluster of a lot of other malls. Now, Cottonwood Mall 
is as you're heading towards Rio Rancho, and it's kind of a standalone mall by itself. It's really nice, fairly big. But when you go over to the uptown area of Albuquerque, you have the uptown mall, you have Coronado Mall, which is right there as well. And back in the day, they had one of the very first malls, Winrock Mall, and they've actually went through Gary Goodman, I know him, pretty good guy, as the developer of that. He owns that property. He's, tear he's from Chicago, tearing most of that mall down and rebuilding it and turning it into more of a town center style deal. He's done a lot of stuff there, brought a lot of new chains to Albuquerque as a result of that. So if you really like the lifestyle mall format, Uptown Mall is one of them, but you're gonna see more of your high-end stores there. And then Winrock, the new Winrock town center uh, is where you would go for that. And there's a load of stuff. He wants to do a lot of things with that. Don't know if they're going to happen. He's really big into uh, capturing uh, Albuquerque's in the desert, so water is a concern. So he's really big into capturing like uh, wastewater, gray water, if you will. So water that comes off of gutters and the sinks and things like that. He wants to recapture and put it back into the landscape and different things like that. Totally different topic. Back onto this, Albuquerque is not for everyone. Now, some people will tout the fact that uh, crime is very high there. It is. It really and truly is. And different parts of the city are affected more by others. It's kind of a hit and miss type of thing. Now, Albuquerque does love its bike culture, and it has a lot of that. Um, and it does like its outdoors, and it has a lot of that. The educational system there is pretty decent. And the reason why is because... They wanted, the governor at the time, Gary Johnson, wanted to invest in education to kind of boost the, the, the overall economy, to try to bring in more uh, technology and things like that and big jobs there. One of the problems is New Mexico lags behind many other states in the region and is kind of one of those states that is suffering economically in many aspects uh, and retaining people, getting college or high school graduation rates up is kind of a problem there. All of that, even though it has the University of New Mexico and different places there, uh, great community college system there, still the, the city and the state struggles in certain areas. I mean, it's getting beat by nearby Texas, Colorado, in Arizona when it comes to uh, investments, when it comes to economic development. I mean, keep in mind, Phoenix, Arizona, and Albuquerque were the same size at one point back in the 40s. Air conditioning came and the population grew in both areas, but Phoenix, Arizona exploded. That city's well over a million people and in the top I forget where it is, top five in terms of population, city exploded and took a lot of economic growth and it's doing a lot of things. But Albuquerque has kind of stayed to the to the back end. As a result, if you're looking for a place where you're going to get a lot of pay, Albuquerque is really not going to be it. It's known for call centers, has a huge amount of concentration of call centers from Sprint to uh, Lido's to uh, there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them are located there in Albuquerque. It's known for that. T-Mobile, a lot of companies put their call centers right there in Albuquerque, and that's kind of the driving force. Another big driving force there is government contracts. It is a government contract hub. There's a lot of labs there, Cyndia Labs, many others. They even have studios, movie studios, believe it or not. New Mexico is really big on producing movies. A lot of them you know, Breaking Bad, others. But a lot of movies that you've seen in Hollywood are filmed right there in New Mexico. They have a lot of different studios located there. They even have, not in Albuquerque, but they even have a spaceport in New Mexico. True. Where they want to launch space rockets from there. Right? So there's a lot of cool things. There's even air, airplane manufacturers there. There's small private jets, but there's airplane, airplane manufacturers there in Albuquerque. So there's, there's so many different things that you'll see there that you're like, doesn't make sense. But it's also a lesser known mile high city. I mean, everybody knows Denver is the mile high city. But so is Albuquerque. In terms of elevation, it is a city that is in the high desert. So the, it takes some getting used to. When we first moved there, my lip busted because it was very dry, wasn't used to it. 
my eyes were red a lot. You have to, your body has to adjust to that. So if you move to Albuquerque, Rio Rancho, wherever, it's going to take a while for your body to kind of adjust to that, but it's fairly quickly. Uh, culturally, they really, really love the culture of New Mexico in every aspect. The buildings that are there have a lot of that Pueblo style design, right? The homes, you'll see a lot of that Pueblo design. Downtown Albuquerque looks very Pueblo-ish. Buildings there don't top out very high, to be honest with you. Their skyline has stayed the same for decades. You don't see a lot of economic development, really. You don't see a lot of high rises being developed. Uh, in fact, the, one of the newest developments is uh, Innovate ABQ, which is their technology corridor that they're working on between the city and the University of New Mexico. So they really are trying to bring about that. They've created an entertainment zone downtown. They've added a grocery store downtown with, uh, you know, uh, other businesses too, but also with uh, residents above it. So they're trying to bring more people downtown. And one of the things that downtown Albuquerque does have that I think is really, really good, it's very small, but their clubs are actually very nice. Probably some of the better clubs I've been to, if you count Indianapolis, Seattle, and Albuquerque, Albuquerque does have some of the better clubs, in my opinion, out of those three cities. To be honest, they don't have a lot. Don't get me wrong. They have like three. But those three clubs or so, those clubs are better. Some of the bars there are better than some of the other places that I've been to. So if nightlife is your scene, you won't have a whole lot of selection, but the selection's not half bad. Food is really, really, really good. Unfortunately, downtown doesn't have a lot of offerings when it comes to places to eat like you would expect in other big city, cities that have a half a million people. But they're trying to get that happening down there. So they're doing a lot of stuff. They have created a BRT line in Albuquerque with a lot of controversy, a lot of issues with that. It's still not up and running. They had a lot of issues with the bus manufacturer uh, that was trying to create an electric bus line that goes all the way from one end of Central to the other. They want to also create... There's a, uh, a mid-region council of governments or what have you, um, which has helped be part of the rail runner commuter rail line. So you can go all the way from Santa Fe all the way down to Bayland, I believe, uh, which goes th straight through Albuquerque. So they have a commuter rail line. It is controversial, uh, has a lot of debt, but it is a great way to see the city. It's pretty awesome because the train at one point runs right in the middle of the interstate, right in the middle of I-25. <laughs> There's cars on both sides. You have a commuter rail runner right down the middle of it going full speed. It's pretty cool. Um, but that's as you go in towards the Santa Fe. But the Mid-Regional -Re Council of Governments wants to build a, another BRT line connecting Uptown all the way down to their sports area. So they have an area where a lot of the sports teams are. So they have minor league baseball, pretty popular. The Isotope Stadium, a pull from the Simpsons, is actually in that area. They also have other stuff down there as far as the university sports teams, all in that general area. So they're trying to connect that along with possibly the uh, airport, all the way connecting that into the existing BRT line. Don't know if that's ever going to happen, but they're trying to make that happen as a result of traffic. Traffic along Central is very bad, has always been bad, probably always will be bad, and the BRT line, some people feel, exacerbates that a little bit. Don't know, haven't lived there in the last couple of years, still own property there, but haven't lived there in a couple of years. Uh, it's a really great city overall. School system's actually better in <laughs> there than here, to be honest with you. Uh, the scorers, in terms of quality of schools, are better there than they are here in Tacoma. Don't know about Seattle, though. But in terms of Tacoma, some of the schools there are better than some of the schools here. Um, you, there's several things you have to obviously be uh, cautious of. Dust storms are a big issue there. Uh, not a big, big, big issue, but they do happen. Uh, it, it does get hot. You have to rely on swamp coolers. If you don't know what that is, Google it. Evaporative coolers. Not nearly as good as air conditioning, but you can't use an air conditioner there. And you can't use evaporative coolers here. Um, that's something you have to get used to. You have to go do maintenance on that. One of the big things is bugs are very different there. You have uh, children of the earth. 
Google that. You have little things that look like scorpions that will be in your house and have like a cool little tail on them. You do have scorpions there. You do have various different things there that are pretty unique. You have giant cockroaches that huddle outside in a bunch. It was one of the coolest things I've ever seen, but also kind of scary. But other than that, it is a very cool city. A lot of things to do. They're changing a lot of things there. There's not a lot that you can do on the inside as of right now. They're changing that because they have Top Golf there, which took a while for them to get, but they the city pushed that through. They have a lot of those entertainment type places that you can go inside and do some stuff with that didn't exist when I was there. Uh, there's a corridor along, uh, I think it's I-25, that has really started to become kind of their entertainment area. They've gotten a lot of restaurants and things like that along there as well. Meow Wolf is a artsy type uh, experience that people can go to. It's an interactive arts experience. They're based in uh, the area. I don't know if they're based in Santa Fe or Albuquerque, but they are based in that general area. They've done a lot of things, a lot of cool stuff like that to do. So things are changing, but mainly it is an outdoorsy type city. One of the biggest retail or one of the biggest employers is in Rio Rancho, and that is also Intel. Intel for a while was on shaky grounds in New Mexico, but now they're starting to make a comeback. That facility is starting to ramp back up again. So it's a really, really interesting thing. The city's trying to get more technology there. Facebook actually put a big data center uh, just on the outside of Albuquerque on the outskirts, kind of farther down. Um, but still, they're really trying to, to bring technology there. It's known for the film industry. It's known for Chile. It's known for a lot of other things, especially the bike culture. So if that is stuff that really appeals to you, Albuquerque is your city. Again, it is a city that does have its issues with crime. Uh, no city doesn't have that problem, but it is a little bit more elevated there. There has been some concerns in terms of how the city has uh, handled that in terms of the police and different things like that. Um, there, are, there are some good points. There's some bad points, just like any other place. Uh, it is hot. It is landlocked. There's no water in terms of if you want a beach. They do have like the little bitty beach. Uh, ten, uh, what's it called? Tingly Beach. Tingly Beach? Something like that. But it's really not. It's just a little concrete little hole. It's pretty cool. You can go fishing there. But anyhow, I can go on and on and on. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I will see you. Take care.